actually this album is it, it can be really nice oh it is really nice um i'll try to see if i can get back i made six of these albums because and i didn't make them that small i make them 12 by 12 it means i use instead of two sheets of paper i use four sheets of 12 by 12 and you can imagine the, the album is this long, you know, like double the, the, the height, but it's exactly as wide. I made them um, when my daughter got was getting married. And after she got married, they have a lot of photographs. So I made one album each for all of her attendants as a thank you gift. And I put the pictures and everybody's picture in it. So when you have a fill it with picture, even the front, like you would decorate it even more. And it's a very, it's actually a very nice album to have. So then you can, you can start um, creating different sections with it. Once you understand the, the theory of how you extend paper, you know. Now, if you have not cut all your paper yet, let me also tell you something else. There are paper out there, and I think some of you, I gave some paper to you. If you see this paper, there's a front and a back, right? But a lot of paper, scrapbooking paper especially, the front and back has different uh, pattern but they are one paper. For, what I mean is, for example, like this, Okay. And when it comes to building album like this, it's actually very useful to use paper that are double-sided. Okay. Because you see Okay. So when you are doing a lot of these album construction, you will want to buy paper that are double-sided. So right now we're using single-sided. The reason is not these sound don't see that. Okay. What I what you could do is these two pieces of paper are different so that you have a contrast. You see that? Otherwise, they will choose one color. You understand what I mean? Okay. So I'm going to use one piece. I'm going to use these two. I will use these two as my outer flap. Okay. But I will choose another one. It's in the middle. It's different. So when it's open, 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 I'm going to pick another piece of paper. So you're going to that's okay, okay, because this is your first one. But if you have a you can use to go with this one, okay? Now, now, let me tell you this. Okay, so this one is the one that I made for my daughter. Okay, so this is the one that I made for my daughter. Okay, so this is the one that I made for my daughter. Okay, so this is the one that I made the reason is they design it with a theme in mind. So this one that you see, the theme is the garden tea party stack. Okay, that's what it's called here. All right, you can see it's called the garden tea party stack. And it's a DCW. Now I'm going to buy Gong, okay? So don't worry, I'm going to buy a pie tea. See, but I've been holding pie tea. It's a lot, a lot, a lot of brand names. It's so much in the middle. 
話俾你聽，你買一本咁嘅時候咧，佢裏邊所有嗰啲紙咧係 coordinated 嘅，嗰啲紙係啲顏色。譬如話你話、哦、我要揾橙色，但係你知有好多唔同嘅色水嘅橙色 ，right？ The, there are millions of shades of the same color. But when you buy it in the same album, you will know that they will coordinate for you so that when you use everything in one project, your whole project actually look really nice. It's just because they have the design in mind already. So this this series, you know, the Garden Tea Party set, what it contains, it, it contains now. Okay, I'm going to guide you. They do tags. This is what we call tags. You can see tags. So if you just cut it out around it, you get a tag and you punch a hole. Okay. But anyways, it is the whole theme is about tea, drinking tea, birds. You you see these are tea marks that they create. Okay. It's like people putting down on a tea. It's tea pots, tea cups, birds. See these are all tea pots. Okay. Now, I don't know if you can see this paper. It's actually really nice. It has a sparkle on it, so it starts to have texture. Okay, yeah. So, anyways, so that's my point. It's like now this paper is supposed to coordinate with this because it's a small polka dot as opposed to a big polka dot. So that's why um, th this value. What I'm trying to say in buying a whole stack, and 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 you use it to make one project, and even sometimes if you build. A scrapbook. You use all the paper in one stack so that every single page is coordinated. But that's the only point I try to make. It's not restricting you from buying anything else. Okay. <laughs> okay. So actually, I'm gonna use. Uh, I just saw the small polka dot. I'm gonna use the small polka dot. Okay, so for the people doing eight and a half by eleven, eight and a half by eleven. Okay, now this is only a sample, so don't use this paper. Like I said, I'm just showing you the sample. Okay, but the way you assemble is exactly as the people who do eight and a half uh, to do twelve by twelve. Okay. Okay, so you will have two sheets. So for the twelve by twelve people, you have two sheets like this. Okay. What you do is because it's twelve inches long, do a score line. Remember what score line is? Take a scoring instrument, measure three inches from each end. Okay. So, if you put a ruler down, it means you score at three. You score at nine. Okay. So you can do it like this. You can put a score at three, score at nine. Just make a little mark for yourself. Score at three and score at nine. Okay. Remember how to do scoring, right? Is to take a ruler, take your scoring tool. Actually, it's best to put the ruler underneath it. Just line up the two marks that you mark on the top and bottom. Okay. Hold it tight. Now, for people who can't hold it tight, what you do is I recommend you put a very small piece of tape so that it won't move. Okay, and basically this is your three-inch mark. You press down on it and run it against the ruler, so that you get your score line. Okay, that's what it is. You run it against the ruler. Okay. 
Okay, so you achieve a score line. It's a very faint score line in this case. So run a couple of times so that you can bend it back nicely, okay? So run it a few times on the same spot. Now do it only on two, two of these, okay? Don't do the other one, okay? Because the other one's scoring is slightly different. So do it at three and at nine, okay? Is it okay if I speak English and everyone? Is everyone okay? Or you want to go to Yes. I mean, my door. I know it, it, it needs to be English. Huh? It needs to be English. English okay? Like, no, okay. so far, so far you're doing both English and Cantonese and that's perfect. Well, I, I didn't, I didn't really do Chinese that much. <laughs> yeah, that's, that does yeah. Once I get going, it's I hard, think you're doing it's hard to drink toy. The English and the Cantonese. Okay, you go, you go, yeah, I'm sick. They have to say, you're going to make it. Okay, now. I did the two lines. Uh, is this the lighting is terrible? Oh, have a time. Oh, have a time. Do you have a Okay, time to go. Okay, If you find that you can't bend it properly, do it again. That means your score line is not deep enough, okay? And that's the problem without a, like without a cutter and without like you're using your, your, your ruler, you just need to push it harder, okay? So, works. I didn't show you people scoreboarding. Actually, there's a scoreboard out there just for scoring. That's why. <laughs> like it's amazing the amount of material, uh, equipment you have doing this craft. Hmm. I'm not sure if this score because it's not score. Some of the pieces are actually very difficult to score. Because why did I score this so difficult? Tell me why. Because this piece is so difficult. On top of this paper, it's actually it's so textured. I don't even you can see this. The paper itself is glittery. It has glitter. So it's a very hard paper. So I find that if I score my, with, my, um, with my ruler and my paper cutter, it's actually not doing a good job. The paper starts to crack underneath. So that's why I went and used the, I wanted to use the, my cutter that broke there to help me. So for the eight and a half by 11 people, you will score 
So, okay, I'm gonna write it out. So this is an eight and a half. So this is an 11 inch. 11 inch, you will have, you can still have three inches and three inches and you will have a five inches in the middle. Do you, you understand what I'm saying, right? So you can score at three inches and at eight inches, okay? This is your score line for eight and a half by 11. You score at three, you score at eight. The 12 people, you score at three, you score at nine. So the in between the differences, the eight and a half, 11 people will have, uh, yeah, you will still have three inches and three inches and you will have only five inches in the middle. Whereas the 12 inch people will have six inches in the middle. That's the only difference, okay? But it will fit, it will still fit when you put everything together. Okay. Um. Okay, now do another, take another 12 by 12 or eight and a half by 11 and get this middle sheet out. So I'm gonna cut this one. the same thing. So really you have three sheets score exactly the same way, okay? And this is your three middle sheets. Do, three do they meet in the middle when you fold them over? Pardon? Do they meet in the middle when you fold them over or is there a gap between them? No, the gap is on the bottom. You're ahead of me. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. The gap is on the flip side. That's why I, yeah. There's the gap. Do you see this? Do you see the, 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 the width? Okay, uh, this is the width, but because we are on the inside, so you do three sheets of 12 by six and you score exactly three and nine inches, okay? Okay, three and nine, that gives you six in the middle. So exactly. if you have the eight and a half. Yes, it'll you... give you five in the middle. You'll be like, five. you score at eight, uh, sorry, score at three inches and score at eight inches. And you give but then they overlap when you turn them in. Uh, like, because yes. the measurement is... Uh, yeah, yeah, it is not quite the same. Then you have to trim it. You have to either trim it. Okay, so if it's five inches, so let's see if you have three, five. Yeah, you will overlap. I see what you say. You overlap. Then you have to flip those two sides out and trim it off so that it's even. In a, in a, so actually, you need only two and a half. Right? Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm getting at, whether thank three you. inches was right or not. Okay, you know thank you. Oh, is this Linda or Veronica? Veronica. Veronica, you know what you do? Sometimes you might not want to trim it just yet because you, yeah. can, build a, you can build, um, like, okay, it's always better to have more paper and not enough, right? So once right. you trim it, you're done. So sometimes overlap might be a blessing because your design is, for example, like I'm doing an overlap as a model for you. We can put two little uh, buttons or something and we do those kind of, you know, like, um, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, like strings, okay? I, I can yeah. show you in a minute. Let me go and, and get that sample. But, but oh, yeah, you're right. there, there will be <laughs> overlap. But let, let's just hold off for now and not cut the, like, but you're right because it will all overlap in this in a way. Yeah, it will all overlap. Um, let me let me show you the construction first, and then because it's always easier to trim off excess. 
Because once you trim it off, you can't add it back on. It's hard to add back. Okay. Okay. What am I doing here? Oh yeah, doing my three-inch uh, scoring. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I hope I'm not leaving people behind because I I realize it's quite confusing when I'm talking on two different sides. I want to show ladies to something I've been working on in the last week or trying to work on. Um, something that you guys were doing last week with me with all these different uh, folders. I want to show you the application of it. So I'm in the middle of constructing a, a total, um, like a, from scratch, a mini album. And you can see how all this can apply to things that you can build in the future. Okay, so here, oh, I got it wrong. Okay, got it wrong. Go, go here. Okay, so now I have three sheets. I have one, two, and this one, and this one. Okay. Yes, it's getting messy. Okay, let's move everything out of the way. So now we have these three sheets, okay? So this is the three sheets. I mean, this is the three sheets, and this is the three sheets, okay? So what you can do is you can glue these two together and glue these two together, all right? You can glue them together so that they, they're like, like what I have here, okay? So if you're getting, you got to this point, you can glue the, the three sheets together so that they, you start to have this kind of a configuration already, okay? So when, after you glue one side, push it down so that you can see that it will fit, okay? But we haven't do the back spine, which is okay, okay? And basically, together, pull them together and actually fold them down to make sure that they meet and they're not like, the mine is already crooked, that they actually were not kicked in the middle. Okay. So yeah, so glue, glue this one to this side and glue this one to this side, okay? Okay, let, let, me, let me get myself going here too. Um, yeah. Now, I can you can see something. Okay, now. Mm. now, when you glue, this project actually is best to use uh, glue tape, but you have nothing, then of course you need to use just your glue, okay? But when you use glue like this, run it only on the perimeter. Try not to have too much glue in the middle. Um, the reason is glue would definitely make the paper buckle, no matter what you do, okay? so. The point is you try to minimize the moisture into the middle of the paper so that there is least amount of buckling in the middle. Especially when you come to gluing the big parts like the square, okay? In fact, we have tape running all the way through. Uh, but that's where glue is not the ideal product just because it has moisture in it, okay? And if you're using uh, glue tape, um, use a little bit more. The reason is this takes a lot of handling. You think of people looking at it, you doing things with it, it's constantly moving. If your adhesive is not strong, 
it will fall apart. Okay, it will fall apart. And I know Angela is from Ontario. Um, I have heard from scrapbookers that <laughs> in Ontario, because of the high humidity, the things tend to fall apart a lot easier than we do in Alberta because we're very dry here. So if you know your surrounding, then you would even, you would um, up your adhesive. You will make your adhesive even stronger. You will buy the, the heavier um, adhesive tape. So those are the things you work with experience. Um, I mean, so this is the one tape the name is called Sok Wang. Now I'm not advertising for them. Okay. Can you see Sok Wang? I like this one. Is that good, Angela? Uh, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's thick. It's thick. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. I make a lot of uh, stocking and I'm using this one. And it's okay. Yeah. See, but stocking is you use material, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But on paper, it's good too. Is it? Okay. Yeah. As long as you're happy with it. Okay. Yeah. But this is a Korean tape. It's spelled S O O K W A N G. Okay. S -O -O -K -W yeah. so this tape is, is very strong. Okay. It's very okay. thick. Okay. Like it's thicker, it's much thicker than these tapes that, that we buy from the dollar store. Okay. This tape, actually, I think I'll show you in the beginning. If I take a, a paper knife and I run it right underneath, I can lift the picture. They call it repositioning tape, right? But this one, if you, if, and this album is all made with Sok Wang and nothing else. I actually have two or three sheets of Sok Wang underneath it. They come in different sizes. If you're doing big projects like this, some people buy them in a row that is four inches thick. Like this is only uh, a quarter inch, right? They, they come in rows that big and they just put one sheet bang into it and then nothing would move, okay? But then again, when you work with things like that, you have to be even more careful, go slowly because once you're stuck, you are stuck. You cannot pull it off. You will rip your paper. <laughs> so, so everything is like, it's a learning process. Like we learn through many mistakes. The weather is so bad. I can't really see without the, the light. I hope it doesn't bother you when I turn on the light. Can we put tape on the back to help it stay together here? Uh, Rhonda? Yeah. Let me let me see your screen. Hang on. Let me go to. Okay, screen. so here's the thing. That's the front, and at the back, I'm wondering if we can put tape here and here to help. Uh, it no, not yet. Well, yeah, what you happened? don't need to worry because there's another layer. I haven't told you another layer. Yeah, ah. that's the layer. That's the extension. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Veronica is way ahead of us. Is everybody finished? Like just like Veronica, I can tell you what is going on. So remember, you have that fourth sheet. Remember that four sheet that I told you about? Now this would be the one that would be this black sheet of paper, okay? Now once you've, you've done the three together, okay, let, let me, it's to sit in between. Now once you put these three together, okay, this fourth one, you score it. Okay, let me give you the scoring instruction first. This is the one that will go on the back, okay? Like it will go on the back like this, okay? You will score also three inches and nine inches, but don't fold it yet. The three inches on your left-hand side needs a quarter inch, so you score at two and three quarter, three inches. You score at nine, and nine and a quarter. Do you understand? So if you're facing yourself, this sheet of paper, okay, you score at three inches, three and a quarter. Nine inches, nine and a quarter. 
three, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, two and three quarter and three, nine and nine and a quarter. Am I, am I making myself understood? Is, am I correct? The reason is, and I think Veronica caught already, you have this little bit of, you have depth now. See, when you, when you close it, because there's a couple of pieces of paper in between, you need, you need that depth. That's a quarter inch depth, okay? And this needs to be incorporated into this middle piece of paper, the last 12 by six. This is, but it's still not quite done, okay? So the last 12 by six is what is what's hold the three pieces together and extend it, okay? So you will have it like this, okay? So you can score at three, but you need a quarter inch on this side, on your on this side, and you need another quarter inch on this side so that you can achieve this effect. You have two hinges because the middle still stay at six inches, but the flat would be a quarter inch less. So again, score at two and three quarter, three, nine inches, nine and a quarter scoring, okay? And this is for this sheet's outside. So don't stick anything to the back yet, okay? Finish scoring, and then once you score it, you can carefully bend this quarter inch. This is where you have to fold a quarter inch so that you have that, that shape, okay? I'll try to get um, get my daughter to get one of her attendants to give to to give me back that 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 one book that I did for them because this, they've been married for six years now. I hope nobody threw that away. I hope to get one back to show you um, that album because I didn't even do the tw twelve by six. I did the twelve by twelve, so it's it's actually a very big, nice album because it's long. Now this is where you can see the merit of having double-sided paper. You see this one, because I use this paper, this would be exposed somehow, even after I put it on, okay? Even I put this on, okay? Um, there'll be another sheet that covers it. I guess it's, it's not too critical because I will eventually cover everything. But this this paper, these paper that I use, uh, they're all double-sided, so the pattern um, there's no need for covering. Now, there's quite a few small details. I'm going to 
stop today and just, okay, I'll do the scoring and then I'll show you this part and then we'll complete the, the rest of it next week. Okay, so, and then I can show you some small things. So let me do the scoring at two and three quarter, three, nine and nine and a quarter, okay? When you do those, these are like what we call the thickness. Uh, it's like the binding of a, a book. Make sure your score lines are very deep, okay? Because the space in between is very small. If you don't score it hard enough, you will find that it's really hard to fold because this, the paper is not, it's not gonna help you be, just because the space is so small, okay? So use a sharper object if you have one. If you don't have this, the, the groove. Or some people like to bend it against the table. Like do just realize that you have something that um, is a bit of a challenge for you, that's all. Like I said, my paper has texture, which makes it even harder. So if you have thinner paper, you don't have to score as hard, but when your paper has have texture and has glitter and all that kind of stuff on the front, it's a stiffer paper overall. Okay. okay, so I don't know if you can see these score lines. You can see the quarter inch right there already, okay? You can see these quarter inches and, and I would bend them first before I try to, oh, the other way, I always. So you take this part, this six inches, the middle six inches here, and you map it up against the middle patch right here, okay? The middle patch right here. And this one needs to curl around it because So I stick this down. It's in the middle. Most of it would be hidden because you would have another. Okay. So next week, what we're going to do is, or if you like, you can cut another piece. Now, okay, so let's say you get up to here, okay? So you notice that, whoops, you notice that. You still have this much uncovered, okay? Now, especially with my long double-sided one, I need to have, you need to cut out one, two, okay. So this inside, remember we always talk about matching and this goes back to same. If you look at this one here, the mats on both sides. Okay, there's no mat in the middle because it got a pattern, but I choose to do two mats on either side. So whenever you mat, what you do is you measure a quarter, a quarter inch less than your total width. 
so that you have an eighth of an inch running around it. That's, that's a guide, okay? Unless you want a smaller mat uh, which are, with a tighter size. So this becomes discretionary, okay? So for now, I can tell you the measurement of these mats are, is five and a half inches by five and a half, okay, on both sides. Five and a half by five and a half, that means you have, they are six by six. So you can do the math, you get a quarter inch running all the way around it, okay? So you cut one piece, two piece, five and a half by five and a half square. And then for the, for the eight and a half by 11 people, sorry, I didn't forget you. So you do three of these sheets identical, just like Veronica did. And you, again, stick all them together and you will have overlapping, okay? But once you overlap, in the middle you have, I guess you can cut it, but you can think about your design. If you have an overlap like a door, you can let the overlap stay and use, um, let me go downstairs and get something and show you. Okay, just wait. Everybody, welcome to my channel. My name. Apologies. This is one of those things that I build. This is what you can build. Okay. Is that you can do a flap. And what I might not mean by closure. This is just two pieces of cardboard. These two are brads. Remember, I give some of you guys brads, these things? 
that you can poke through. Well, I know I gave you some really small ones, okay? This one is bigger, but that's one way of using it. And you tie a string to it or a ribbon to it. You glue it between the cardboard. And then so that's where you, I'm talking about that you can have a closure in the middle and you do, and you do a bit of stringing like this, similar to this idea, okay? So you might want it overlap, but not necessarily, okay? I think you can still apply this kind of, of design, even if it doesn't overlap, but I think it will make more sense to be overlap. So I created this out of cardboard and it's just an, an, an envelope, okay? So that's what I mean by um, don't cutting your overlap thing right away. Think about what you want to do. And when you really don't want it, then yes, go cut it. So basically then your eight and a half by 11, you, um, your flap on both sides, instead of three inches, you would only have two and a half because the middle is only five. So you need it to meet. So you, you trim away a half an inch on each side and you will, when you close it, you'll be like what we have here, okay? Okay, so um, yeah, okay, so next week when you come back, now don't stick this down yet, okay? Uh, oh, no, no, that's fine, that's fine. Because you see the ribbon comes in here. Okay, don't stick this down yet. What I'm trying to say is like don't stick this sheet in yet because we want to run a ribbon, we want to do a slit and run this ribbon through before we stick it on. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because other, you can see that the, the ribbon is already hidden beneath the sheet. It only comes through here on both sides. So we need to make a, a, a slit in the middle of the sheet in order to run the ribbon through, okay? And again, the ribbon is optional because I mean, you can actually, you can close this thing with no ribbon and it's okay. Okay, so you don't have to have a ribbon. I want to show you different examples. Like the one I made is, what I did is I actually take a clasp and, and I didn't have a ribbon on every single one of them. Some of them you can build a clasp on here. Okay, you can have uh, elastic or something and close it. So ribbon is just one of the many ways you can close it, okay? But if you want to run a ribbon, then don't stick this on yet, okay? Just leave it for now, do the scoring, and then next week, after we do the cut, run the ribbon through, then we close it off. But for next week, you can, you can help by doing two sheets of five and a half by five and a half in the middle. If you want another mat in the middle, also do another five and a half. Again, the idea is do a quarter inch run on the outside. So if you measure it and you cut something smaller than half an inch of the total area, you will get that quarter inch effect. And after you cut, put this on, and I'm assuming that most of you do not have double-sided paper, you will need another sheet of paper. Now make it contrasting so that it looks different, just like here. Well, actually this one is just a different color. So you want, you want this to show off. So get another sheet of paper with different pattern, okay? And cut a piece of six by six to cover this side on both sides. So two pieces of six by six to cover it so that when you close it, and then you can also do a mat. Now don't forget this one too. You also need to cover this one with another piece of, um, this would be three by six. Okay, this side is three by six. So it's all about measuring. You can also, instead of doing six by six, you can do a nine by six, okay? Because this is a nine inch run by six inch and to cover this side. So now you you be the designer. You do what you like to make the back side, like, you know, complete. But after you cut the paper, do not stick it down yet, okay? Because I want to show you the, the part where you, you can run a ribbon through, unless you don't want a ribbon, okay? So, so we'll, we'll complete it next week. And, and that, yeah, that, that will show it. And before you go, let me show you what I'm doing with the stuff that I was showing you guys how to do last week. 
So this is my new project. So there is, remember all these things that we do? Remember the, these folders? These are my, your waterfall, okay? So I've done, now this is how constructing a scrapbook looks like, okay? You start with doing something like this, okay? And if you guys are interested, I can show it to you in the new year. So this is my book. So basically you create a book, okay? And this thing here, okay? I don't know if you can see, it's kind of hard to see. Um, can you see? Let's see how you can see generally. Okay, see how this thing looks like, it's, it's a series of grout that I pin together Okay, and what it does is it will go into here and eventually when all these pages are done, I would adhere each flap to here, to one side. So that, like, so right now everything is not put together. So I will have all these sheets, one on top of the other in the groove and you can have a book. Okay, I think you can get the idea when you see it. Like, you know, so anyway, so I'm, I'm preparing them all separately first, okay? And so for one, for one of these things that I showed you guys last week, for example, so I would do something like this, like I would stick them down and this is what, uh, we did a waterfall that you can open, but this one, I'm gonna do a waterfall that you use your hand to open. And so basically it's just putting these a quarter inch after each other. And then now use your imagination because it's not pinned down. <laughs> so when I'm finally done, I'll have them all stuck together and it will be a page like this, some like this. Okay, and then when you pin them all down, then you can flip all the pages. They would they would come together, and this is what a what we call a waterfall. Okay, so that means one page will have this kind of thing, and another page. So I created another page like this. So again, and then I now this is building the album. Is I have hinges in here. I made hinges, so now they flip out. Okay, so one page, but when you close it, you can flip out. And I've done some like this, where is it? Okay, this one, this one is another page, but when you open it, you actually have like a trifold, okay? And in a trifold, then I built a pocket. I can start th sticking things in there. Okay, I don't think this would fit because it's too big. So I would have to have something smaller, like do a tag or something like that. So this is like the process of building an album. And it's actually, this is really fun because by the time you're done, you give it to people like this and let them put their own picture in, okay? So you created some kind of a scrap album for them to put things in. So this is a work in process, not quite done yet, but I hope that I will actually be done by about the 18th because I have to give this away for some of these birthdays. So now you can see this, this is easier to see now when the light is right. You see, these are the, the spine that I would put into here. I would put into here eventually. And then each page would get stuck on each of this so that it, they can open and lay flat. Okay. So I hope I uh, stimulate your curiosity that you will, you will create something like that for yourself or for someone that, for a gift for someone, okay, eventually. So thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry that I was late. Um, yeah. So I hope that you guys have a good week. And yeah, thank you. Uh, teacher, I have a question. Uh, before you, you saw, saw the uh, we, uh, glue tips, uh, uh, glue oh. tip is the, the name is the socking. S-O-O-K-W-I-N-G. 
S O O K W A N G， 缩棍，缩棍。S O K W I N G 哎 ，No W A N G A N G O K W A N G Yeah, it's a Korean product. Okay, because if you type it, because you will find. Okay, okay, because today I don't have this the paper ah the tip I don't I I I can mix. Yeah, yeah, you will just find that this is very much stronger. That's all. Um, you can buy three M tape. Um. Yeah, so they are all similar, but yeah, you will try it. But I find that So Guan is the strongest. Okay. The strongest. Yeah. Thank you. And because it costs a little bit more, don't you use it when you do just in the beginning. We talk about scrapbooking, like pictures in the scrapbook. Don't use this; it will be a waste okay. of good tape. <laughs> you will use. And the tape, like, like this one for picture, is enough because the fact is, when you put a picture down, people don't move your picture. But when you build an album like this, people move the album. So、okay. I need this to be very strong. Okay. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Uh, that 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 one is the by the uh my by what? Oh, where do you buy it? Um. Uh huh. I I got it online. I can I cannot find、oh, so many in the market, but online and、okay. yeah, I I buy online. Um, I buy forty、oh. rows at a time <laughs> because、oh. I use use a lot. So if if you really want it, tell me. I'm willing to give you two rows. Um, okay. Because, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, Thank you. Yeah, thank you so yeah, much. Otherwise, you can、yeah. go online. But if you want one, I'll give you a, a roll, no problem. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. Another one is that this paper. I I don't have have this this same is by yes, the Michael, those, right? Yes, these paper you, you, you make, buy from Michael. Yeah, all the, the yeah you can buy from Michael.、Oh, okay. I tell you, they, yeah. Because if I I don't know again, I don't know how well how comfortable you are online. There's a there's a place called Marketplace、uh -huh. Buy and Sell. On the Facebook,、okay. a lot of people sell these、okay. things like privately. You know, you heard of the bin system, so,、mm. so you you basically you they, you know、um, they ask for whatever money, and if you want it, all you have to say yes, I want it, and I'll come pick it up. So you just drop the money into the bin and pick up the product that、mm. they set aside for you. And there are、okay. lots of them out there, and they're much cheaper than Michael. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.、No、Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. And this week has some、yes. same class. Yes. And we will finish. And we will、oh, finish. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Thank you. Yeah. 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 So this is the project. I really hope I will finish next week if I don't get sick. <laughs> if I get finished, if I get sick, then I can't do much. But yeah.